No matter who you are, you will have haters. John 15 verse 18 says, If the world hates you, know that it hated Jesus first. So if you have haters, know that God is greater than your haters. Lately you've been feeling, feeling the way of your haters coming at you with their envy and their hate. Scheming against you, throwing mud on your name. But God's gonna work it out despite their lies and gain. God is greater, so much greater than your haters. God is greater, don't give up, it'll pay off later. God is greater, through the pain you're a giant slayer. Stop waiting for closure from people who did you dirty. Because as a believer, God already gave you closure the moment he showed you their fruit. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find value here. Before we get into today's topic, I'm going to tell you about the awesome inspirational mug that I'm drinking out of. So today I am drinking from the If You Believe You Are Who God Says You Are mug. And sometimes we need those reminders because we all have those moments myself included where you know self-doubt creeps in or we're not really feeling at our best if you have any of our inspirational mugs hoodies t-shirts or if you have any of my books which one do you have and how has it benefited you let me know in the comments so we're talking about waiting for closure from a person who did you dirty and why that is not helpful because as a believer, it's important to understand that God already gave you closure when he showed you the person's fruit. Now, the world will tell you that you need to wait for somebody else to give you closure when a relationship doesn't work out, when that individual betrayed you, when another person threw you onto the bus and did you dirty. And what happens is it keeps you stuck when you are waiting for somebody else because it is allowing your healing to be held hostage it is giving that other person the power to hold their to hold your healing in their hands and closure looks different for everyone right but essentially what closure is it's a sense of release and peace that come from accepting that a relationship has ended for whatever reason whether it is a romantic relationship whether it is a uh, friendship a business relationship so it is that that feeling of being able to finally breathe and finally move on breathe in the sense of being able to kind of exhale and let it go and so when we haven't found closure, it's a couple of things. And then I want to tell you why you don't need somebody else to give you closure as a believer. I want to be very clear that I'm speaking to the believer. And so when you feel stuck, what happens is, and you don't have closure, you feel like you can't understand what happened. And so understanding why a relationship ended helps to bring peace because you're trying to make sense of how things ended or you're trying to make sense of why a person did you dirty. Again, it can be a friend who just threw you under the bus, a friend who betrayed you, a friend who backstabbed you in the worst possible way, a family member who betrayed you in the worst possible way. And you can't wrap your mind around how and why uh, it happened. But here's the thing that's important to keep in mind. When God showed you that person's fruit, you already have closure. And this is going to be difficult to wrap our mind around, but it is the truth. And if you take God as at his word, if you believe that the word is the everlasting truth of God, right? If that is your foundation, then when God shows you a person's fruit, that is all the closure you need. Because closure is essentially acceptance. It is accepting that it is what it is, not what you want it to be, not how you think it's supposed to be, 
not the way it should be or could be or would be, but how it really is. And so when we see the fruit of somebody, that's the closure. Matthew 7, 16, and I use this uh, scripture often and I will continue to use it often because it speaks to the heart of understanding why people do what they do. Matthew 7, verse 16 says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes and figs from thistles? And the answer is no. Men do not gather grapes from thorn bushes. You can't. Or a fig from a thistle. A thorn bush can only produce another thorn bush. A thistle seed can only produce another thistle. Thistles cannot produce fig fruit. And thorns cannot produce grapes. But when we're looking for an individual who has thorn bush ways to produce grapes. Now think about the analogy being used here. Right? The analogy is do men gather grapes from thorn bushes, right? So a grape will feed you. A grape will give you substance because it feeds you. You can eat a grape, right? A fig will feed you. You can eat a fig. It's fruit. But you can't get substance from a thistle. In fact, the thistle will scratch your throat. It may choke you. A thorn will prick you. And so when somebody keeps pricking at your joy, pricking at your self-respect, pricking at your confidence, but you're expecting to be emotionally and mentally fed, you're going to be sourly disappointed each and every time because your expectations are not lining up with the reality of that person. The scripture says you will know them by their fruit, not your fruit. And so a lot of times what happens with many believers is that Many of us naively believe that just because you possess the fruit of kindness, compassion, generosity, loyalty, that you are trustworthy, you say what you mean, you mean what you say, you stand by your word, that everybody in the world moves like you. And that's a naive way to look at the world because the scriptures are very clear. There's good in the world and there's evil in the world. The scriptures let us know not to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. The scriptures tell us things like Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour, right? The scriptures tell us things that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ comes so that we may have life abundantly. So the scriptures give us plenty of uh, truth, plenty of principles to let us know how the world works, how people are right? And so if we remember that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy and often uses people closest to us to do it, we'll use our own thoughts, our own emotions, right? Situation, circumstances, but often people closest to us, then it is no surprise. And so when we are waiting to move on with our lives for somebody to acknowledge what they did, to say they're sorry, to take full accountability. We do ourselves a disservice. Now, let me be clear. I'm not saying not to desire that, right? Because what human being doesn't desire somebody to say, I'm sorry if they deeply hurt them, if they deeply betrayed them. So the heart does want that. But what I'm saying is, don't you be the cause of holding up your own life, waiting for somebody else to give you your healing because you may be waiting for your whole life. And when we get into a space where we start to say, well, I don't understand how my cousin or my sibling could sell me out to somebody. I don't understand how my cousin or my sibling can have an affair with my spouse. I don't understand how my spouse could throw away our marriage after 20 years, right? And so that becomes the narrative that immobilizes you. Because the thing is, when God shows you a person's fruit, and this is going to be hard to hear, but I'm speaking from a place of love. But it's, it's, it's tough love. When God shows us a person's fruit, there's nothing to not understand. When you see an orange, you know it's an orange. Even if the orange is covered in chocolate, or if you like chocolate club, uh, covered strawberries, when you take the chocolate off, when you eat the chocolate, and you bite into it, it is a strawberry covered in chocolate. And so if a person is selfish, 
right? If that's the fruit, because fruit is what we produce by way of our actions, our choices, our habits, and our patterns. And so when you clearly see that a person makes choices rooted in selfishness, rooted in greed, that they will do anything for money, including steal from you. Maybe you had a situation where you know, a house was left from a, uh, by a family member and you have a greedy sibling who found a way to get the house from underneath you and you are shocked. But why are you shocked if you've always known that the sibling was greedy? You know this because they showed you the fruit of greed. Now, it may not have been the house. It may have been in smaller things because fruit always starts out as a seed, but they showed you that. And so if you have a cousin who uh, made a play for your significant other and you are shocked but you have known your cousin long enough to see that she has no loyalty to anybody close to her because you have seen her be disloyal and backstab other people it's just it's just your turn it's your turn and it doesn't feel good right i've been betrayed i've been gossiped about like every other human being on the planet who hasn't but the thing is we cannot wait for another human being to give us what God has already given us. God has already given you the closure you need. Now, it is nice if somebody is willing to have an honest heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you, but you don't need them. That's the distinction I'm making. You don't need them for your closure. Don't give anybody that type of emotional hold over you. Don't give anybody that type of power. And here's the other piece, right? John 8 32 says this John chapter 8 32 and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free and so as soon as you know the truth right and what is the truth the truth is the fruit that's the truth as soon as you know the truth of the situation you were already free so if you are free that means that you are not held emotionally hostage unless you choose to hold yourself emotionally hostage. That means that you already got the closure you need so that you can begin to do the things that bring you joy and take your joy back, take your peace back, take your confidence back because those things don't belong to the person who hurt you. Those things don't belong to the person who did you dirty. Those things don't belong. Your peace doesn't belong in the hands of the person who discarded you like you were nothing. They don't get to have your peace. Are you kidding me? They don't get to have your joy. Who the hell are they? They don't get to have those things. God gave them to you for you to have them. That is your peace. Just like their peace is their peace, your peace is your peace. And so John 8, 32 says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And so as soon as you found out that your cousin was trying to, get into a, a situation, was trying to sleep with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your spouse, right? That was the truth about your cousin. And if your spouse went for it, it was the truth about your spouse. And so that truth makes you free. That truth makes you free. So there's no need to be held hostage with I can't believe in why. And here's where we get it twisted. It's going to be hard. But a lot of times as believers, we're not using our biblical tools. We're not using the word of God. Because we know people by their fruit. Again, fruit is what we produce by our actions, our choices, our patterns, our behavior. That's the truth. And so if your significant other has no loyalty to you and your cousin is envious and has no loyalty, loyalty to anybody but themselves, that is the truth. That is the truth, that's the hard, cold truth. And when we are able to look at the hard, cold truth, it takes out the all that I can't believe. There's, there's nothing to not believe. See, when we get into I can't believe, what we're really saying is, I'm not ready to accept. Because when somebody shows you an orange, you're not going to say, I can't believe it's an orange. It really should be a banana. So when somebody is showing you betrayal, I don't care if you've known them for 30 years. That's what's in their heart. And so when we really stand by the principle of knowing people by their fruit, we have less questions about why people do what they do. 
And so you may say, how could they throw away a, a, a 10 year marriage? Because they operate from the fruit of selfishness. They operate from the fruit of lust. They operate from the fruit of greed, whatever the fruit is. But you know them by their fruit. And what happens is most people judge people by their own fruit. And they say things like, if it were me, I would never. But they're not you. And that's the problem. You are expecting you from other people. When we know people by their fruit, that's the truth of what we're dealing with. That's the truth and the heart of the situation. And that makes us free. That makes us free. You are free to begin to not ask a hundred questions and to move forward. Because every question comes back to the answer, the fruit. No matter what you ask, it's going to come back to that. I can't believe how this person can be related to me and be abusive because they are a predator and a narcissist. That's their fruit. That's their fruit. And the quicker that we acknowledge fruit, and I'm talking as adults, as children, we can't control the environments we're raised in. But as adults, the quicker we are to acknowledge a person's fruit, then we can move accordingly. Because this person has predatory ways, even though they're related to me, I have to stay away from them. I choose not to be in relationship with them, even though we're cousins, even though this is my sister, my brother, my mother, my father, because their fruit is the fruit of narcissism. And my purpose, my life's purpose is more important than placating to their narcissist, narcissistic and predatory ways. And these are hard conversations. These are hard conversations, but this gives us the closure because God gives us the closure as soon as he shows us the fruit. Then it's up to us to make a decision, right? We have free will. But once he shows us a person's fruit, right, we have to decide what we're going to do with that fruit. Do we want to continue eating of that fruit? Or do we say enough is enough? Only you can decide it's your life. You absolutely are free to stay in a toxic situation. You are absolutely free to do so. But understand what comes with that and understand that prolonged stress leads to so many illnesses. So you, you get to decide how you wanna live your life. Now, let me be clear, it is not your fault when a person betrays you, does you dirty, it is 100% their fault and they need to be accountable, right? But what I'm saying is, if they never come to you and say the words, I'm sorry, if they never admit that they're selfish, greedy, whatever the fruit is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do to ensure that you live your life with purpose, peace, and joy? What are you going to do to move forward so that your emotional healing isn't held in their hands? See, in my opinion, closure is overrated. Because once we become adults, you can close the door all by yourself. You don't need nobody else to close the door on a toxic relationship. You can choose to close the door when God shows you that person's fruit because the truth sets us free. The truth sets us free. So here's the other piece, right? That's important to keep in mind in terms of closure, right? So... It is normal to want validation and closure from someone who did you dirty. Let me say that. But what happens is sometimes it can cause us to behave in ways that are self-sabotaging in order to get that closure that you may never get. The person may never take accountability. They may deny that they did what they did. They may play in your face and lie in your face. And are you going to continue to allow them to take what belongs to you, your peace, your joy, right? And so what happens is you can find yourself constantly texting someone, calling them, stalking them, excessive behavior. And that keeps us from moving forward. And that can last for months. I've known people who have waited years talking about how dirty their ex did them. And it is 20, I know one man who is in his 70s, 
in his 70s. And he still talks about what his wife of 40 years ago, how she did him dirty. And the thing is, it robs you of your peace. So that's number one. It robs you of your peace and it can cause you to engage in very self-sabotaging behavior, which keeps us from moving forward, right? Two, if you don't get the closure that you expect, it can trigger pre-existing pre -existing wounds. So let's say you meet up with the person and you ask them for a closure conversation. And when you start talking to them about what they did, they tell you, I have no recollection of that. I never did that. And you're yelling, you're screaming, you're upset. And no matter how upset you are, it doesn't change the fact that they will not take accountability or worse. Let's say that they do admit it, but they don't care. Yeah, I did that. So get over it. So what? Get over it. And you were one of many victims and they just don't care because they're operating from the fruit of callousness, wickedness, and predatory behavior. And see, a lot of times what happens is we get into this, I don't understand. And what's, what's not to understand? What's, what's not to understand? And so when we say, I don't understand, I want you to get in the habit of replacing I don't understand with the fruit. So rather than I don't understand how they could throw away a marriage of 20 years, when you start saying that, say, I don't understand and what's the fruit? Substitute the fruit. I don't understand and then you're going to get an understanding. So it would look like I don't understand how a selfish, greedy individual, and you'll find you're going to stop yourself. Because as soon as you say the word selfish and greedy, if that fits the character of that person, that's the answer to I don't understand. That's the answer. And because you're not selfish and greedy, you are applying your fruit to their personality. But you don't know people by your fruit. That's not what the scriptures say. You know them by their fruit. And so what's not to understand? I don't understand, let's say you have a cousin who's always been envious of you. And so as soon as you find yourself saying, I don't understand how my cousin can gossip about me, befriend my enemies, uh, just mistreat me. As soon as you find yourself saying all that, I don't understand how someone with diabolical envy, and you, you, you're answering your own question. As soon as you start with the I don't understand, identify the fruit. Now, this is what has also helped, right? I want to give you another scripture. And this really speaks to what we find ourselves saying, I don't understand. You might hear me sounding a little na uh, nasally, my allergies. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say, Trust in the law with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path, Right? So when you trust in the Lord, you trust in what the Lord shows you about people. That's part of trusting in the Lord. When you trust in the Lord and he shows you that a person is not who you thought they were, you trust that. You don't question it. You don't make excuses for it. And it's hard, right? I'm not saying it's not hard. Well, only human, the heart wants what it wants. The heart wants what it wants. Whether we're longing to be close to family whether it's loneliness, whatever the heart wants, the heart wants what the heart wants. But we got to trust in the law with all of our heart. And that also includes trusting what he shows us about a person when he shows us their fruit. So trust in the law with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is so profound because so many of us do lean to our own understanding when we say things like, I don't understand. I don't understand how they could do me so dirty. What's not to understand? We're not supposed to lean on our own understanding. We're supposed to lean into our understanding of the word. What does the word tell you about people? The word tells you we know people by their fruit. The, world, the word tells us about people where there's envy and self-seeking, there's confusion and every evil work. And so if the person is operating from the fruit of envy and the fruit of self-seeking, then two things are going to be present. 
confusing. They're going to behave in ways that don't line up with what they say and every evil work. That's the understanding. So we're not supposed to lean to our understanding. Our understanding means our expectation of how we believe the world is supposed to be and how we believe people should, could, and would be. No, that's, that's not real. That's not real. We got to deal with people as we are, as they are, I'm sorry. So if you dealing, if you see somebody is behaving in a predatory way, right? Let's say you're, uh, you're out and about and you see that somebody is behaving in a predatory way, they're behaving in a way that makes you uneasy, right? Maybe they're yelling and screaming. Maybe they knock somebody over, just push them out the way, and you are witnessing this. You're across the street, and you can see their behavior, right? It would not be wise to be, I don't understand how this person, no, no, no. You, you clearly see the fruit. You see the fruit of aggressive behavior, right? They push somebody out the way. And let's say you're still walking wherever you're going and you see them hit somebody else and they are, they, they are, they're, they're out of their mind, right? So you're not going to lean on your own understanding. Well, I don't understand. No, you're going to clearly act on the fruit that you're seeing and you're going to get yourself as far away from that person as possible, you're going to perhaps call 911 if it's safe to do so when you're at a safe enough distance so you can call 911 so they're not hurting other people. But you understand. You understand based on the fruit. So similarly, when we are dealing with someone who does us dirty and we use the term, I don't understand, it holds us hostage because we're not even supposed to lean to our own understanding we are supposed to lean to the word of god what does the word of god say so if we know people by their fruit if the truth will set you free and the truth of the matter is the person is disloyal the person was always envious of you the person doesn't like the fact that you are growing and moving and changing and evolving the person and you can insert what the fruit is then that's the reality of that situation that's the reality of that person's nature and you got to deal with them accordingly and so you don't need anybody this is what i'm getting at to give you your healing you don't need anybody to validate your healing because when god shows you the fruit of a person who does you absolutely dirty and i mean absolutely dirty that's the closure you need that's the closure within itself. And when we really begin to lean into the word of God, we find that the recovery time of healing from adverse experiences becomes shorter and shorter because we're leaning into the word of God for our healing and we're not allowing another human being to hold our healing in their hand. Don't give anybody that type of power. I remember in my own life, many, many, many years ago, uh, I was, I had a friend who I thought was a friend and uh, they really disappointed me. And we had a closure conversation, right? And I said to them, you know, I feel like I was a better friend to you than you were to me and here's why. And I was very specific. I was very calm. And the individual didn't even lie and you know she said you know you were right you're right you were a better friend than i was because you know i'm spoiled and selfish that was her answer i couldn't even be mad she was straight up i'm spoiled and i'm selfish and i had to take a good look at myself i couldn't even be mad at her i had to take a look at myself and say cassandra this 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 one's on you because you are giving permanent loyalty to someone who's showing you they have a temporary time period in your life because they just passing through. You are giving loyalty to a person who's disloyal. You were loyal to a fault and you were going to have to move differently. So that was on me because there were signs throughout that friendship 
there were signs throughout that friendship that showed me that this individual was selfish. And not just selfish, but, well, basically it comes down to selfish. It was selfish and self-seeking. There, there were signs of that throughout. So why was I surprised when I was dealt the ultimate blow of selfishness and being thrown under the bus where I could not believe? And I had the same script back then that many of you have today. I can't believe you could do the things you do. I can't believe, I don't understand it. And, and my famous one was, you know, I would never do you like that if it were me. But I had to really think about it and say, but she's not me, she's her. And so I am projecting my positive quality on her. And many of us do that. And back then, yet back then I didn't even know the Lord. You know, I, I believed in God, but I didn't know the Lord like I do today. And I was projecting my positive qualities on her. That's positive projection. When you think because you're trustworthy, the other person is acting in good faith and they're trustworthy. But the Bible tells us, do not believe every spirit, test the spirits. And so this was a situation where I projected my qualities on her. And because I was loyal to a fault, that was something that I had to learn to work on. And so sometimes we gotta take a hard look at ourselves and say, well, what part did I play in this? And a lot of things come from how we, we are raised. Uh, a lot of us ra are raised with certain values and we believe that everybody is raised with those same values and we get out into the world and we realize this, it could be a jungle out there and we gotta test the spirit. And so when she said, you know, you're right, you were a better friend uh, to me than I was to you because I'm spoiled and I'm selfish. And I was the type of friend and I've changed a lot of my ways in terms of, in terms of really testing the spirit. But back then, if I had it and you didn't have it, we had it because we're friends, you know, and it didn't occur to me that people will use you and take advantage of you because I was just a very giving person like that and it, it never occurred to me. But when she dealt the final backstabbing blow, it, it hurt and I was dumbfounded. But when I really sat and thought about it, I was like, you know, she showed me this throughout the friendship, but I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see it. And sometimes that's really what it is. And once we had that conversation, once we had that conversation, it only solidified what I already thought. But here's the thing. If she never chose to meet with me to have the conversation, I would still have to figure out a way to get closure. And there were other situations, not just her, where somebody did me dirty and we didn't have a closure conversation. And as I got older, I had to learn, as I got older and walked with the Lord, which is the most important point, I had to learn to get my closure from God because the truth really does set us free. John 8, 32, the truth sets us free. And when the person who did you dirty is not willing to admit the truth, God will show you the truth. So you don't need them. So if she never said that, if she never admitted that she was spoiled and she was selfish, I know the God I serve was already showing me that. And it was up to me it was up to me to take God at his word, to take God as what to take God at what he was already showing me. That was on me. A hundred percent. So for those of you who are waiting for someone to give you closure, who, who's waiting for someone to start living your life with joy, with peace, with purpose, I want to encourage you to go back and ask the question: what fruit? is God showing me about this person? Because that's the closure you need. What truth is God telling me about this person? Because the truth will set you free. And once you finally come to terms with that truth, whether the truth is my mother's a narcissist, whether the truth is my cousin has always been jealous of me, whether the truth is uh, my significant other was looking for a come up and I was it. Whatever the truth is, when you can tell yourself the absolute truth, even if you got to do so through the tears because it hurts, it's going to set you free.
and you won't give another human being the power to hold your healing in their hands. God is a bomb in Gilead and he will give you the mental, emotional healing that you need. If you have ever been in a situation where you was like, I don't understand, I can't believe, how did you finally accept that it was what it was so that you can begin to move different with that person, whether that meant cutting them off completely, whatever it looked like for you, what were you able to do to begin moving forward towards your peace, your joy, your purpose, and starting a new chapter of your life, whatever that looked like for you. So with that said, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. So two resources I want to recommend to you as well as our Wednesday Wellness Club. So if you are not yet a member of the Wednesday Wellness Club, I got to tell you, you're missing out. When you become a member of the Wednesday Wellness Club, you get access to our Wednesday Wellness Calls. They happen the first and third Wednesday of every month by telephone conference calls. So it's live. We're able to hear each other. And uh, it's a therapeutic group that meets twice a month. And we focus on mental well-being, emotional healing, self-care, uh, successful life through a biblical lens. And uh, the feedback we get is it is very therapeutic. People tell us they've grown so much as a result of the Wednesday Wellness Club that they're taking back their life in ways that they never imagined they would. And uh, for a nominal, nominal fee, a nominal fee, it is nothing compared to what you would pay for therapy. Make the investment in yourself. It is worth it. I would encourage you to uh, do that. Two resources I want to recommend. If you are recovering from a breakup, I would encourage you to pick up the book, Don't Let a Breakup Break You Down. Now, I want to let you know that this is a book that I wrote before I was in ministry. <laughs> so it's a, you're going to see a different side of me. But uh, this book gives you principles and strategies and action steps to begin to get your life in forward motion when the breakup is raw when the breakup is raw and it is really written for you to not allow a breakup to break your whole world down even though that's how it feels emotionally and the book was written for women but men have bought the book and benefited too so every place where you see woman cross out the w-o and let it speak to you as a man because the principles are interchangeable and that book is Don't Let a Breakup Break You Down. And that's the book, again, that gives you action steps. That's important because the mind needs a focus. The mind needs something to do so that you don't wallow in the shoulda, woulda, coulda, why not. So that would be really helpful. The other resource, if it's not a, a breakup in terms of a romantic relationship and uh, you're just finding closure in terms of healing for your own life, is the Soul Fast Workbook. It requires a 40-day commitment, but you don't have to do it in one lump sum. There are some people who get the Soul Fast Workbook and they'll do it in 10-day increments. So the Soul Fast Workbook is a spiritual detox to release negative thoughts, negative emotions, to reevaluate choices that may not be the best choices for you to make more positive choices and to reevaluate your relationships. And there are four chapters that are structured in 10-day increments. So some people will do 10 days, put it down for a couple of weeks, pick it back up, and then do another 10 days. So section one, the first 10 days, focuses on your thought life. The second 10 days focuses on your emotional life. The third 10-day period focuses on choices. And the fourth focuses on relationships. So you really can just pick a 10-day section that you want to work on if you don't want to do the 40-day commitment. And uh, you will find that the self-paced workbook, it is a workbook, that the self-paced workbook will really help you to recognize some things and to strengthen some things in your life. That's the Soul Fast Workbook. So I just want to make sure you know about resources we have for you because oftentimes, uh, you may find that you want things beyond the public videos that go deeper. So with that being said, have an amazing day. Take care of yourself and let's do our best to be kind to one another. Talk to you soon.